Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the matrix visual and I'll be revisiting a matrix that I created a while ago in one of my demo dashboards. So we're going to go through and we're going to apply some of the great new features that's available within Power BI and also some additional knowledge that I've picked up between now and the last time I created it. So we're going to take this visual here that looks like this and we're going to make some changes to it so it looks like this. Okay, so let's crack on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this grey background here. And I'm going to just give ourselves a little bit of extra space here to work with this. Okay, so next I'm going to add some padding. Now this was introduced last year and it allows us to add some white space between the edges of the visual and the actual text itself. So we'll go up to style and size and here it is here, padding. Okay, so we're going to increase that. Okay, so I'll put 10 in here, 10 here, 10 here and we'll leave that at 5. Okay, so now I'm going to actually add a border and I'm going to add a shadow here. I'm going to turn the visual border on and I'm going to make it white to begin with. And we're going to put some corners in here, make that six. And then I'm going to add in a shadow and I'm going to select a, a relatively light color here. We'll start off with this one here, maybe a little bit darker. And then I'm going to go and leave that on the outside and then I'm going to go to custom. And I'm just going to play with this a little bit. So I'll make the size the same. The blur, I'm going to reduce that to 5. And the distance, I'm going to reduce that to 5 as well. Okay, so that makes it pop a little bit. And we might come back and adjust that. But the, the concept is adding a border on here rather than that grey border that we had in the previous version. Okay, so next we're going to play with the title. Now we've got an option now to add in not only a title but a subtitle and also a divider line. So we're going to make use of that feature. So go to title and then I'm going to go and add in a subtitle and activate that. And then I'm also going to activate the divider. Now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to actually phrase the title as the question that the visual answers rather than the title. And then we're going to use a subtitle to explain what's actually in the visual. Okay, so I've changed this to which departments and disciplines need support to reduce Splatog. Okay, because it's shown us here who has the highest backlog using this. Okay, so I've changed it now to a question that the visual answers. Which department and disciplines need support to reduce backlog? And we can see clearly here that maintenance and mechanical are the have got the largest backlog here. So we're going to select the visual and next we're going to add in a subtitle. Now we're also going to use this new option here that's been introduced which allows us to click on the title and it's a lot more intuitive and just actually add it in on the visual itself rather than enter it using the, the values at the side here. Now you can use these as well, but we're just going to enter it straight into here. Okay, now I'm going to go and just modify the size of this and the font. So I'm going to select this and we're going to change the color to be this slightly darker, slightly lighter black. And then I'm going to left justify it and then I'm going to reduce the size to 12 and I'm going to make it bold. Okay, and then under here, I'm going to go and select this and I'm going to change the color to be slightly lighter. And I'm going to bold it and we'll leave that at 10 for just now. In fact, I might just make it slightly darker. Okay, so we've got a nice header here that tell, that's actually phrased as a question that the visual answers. And we've got a description of what's actually been displayed inside the visual. Next, we're going to look at this divider. So let's open it up and I'm going to make that the same color as the text here. And then we're going to click on the ignore padding as off. So it will auto scale to the size of the padding that we defined earlier on, which is up here and is 10 on the left and 10 on the right. And I just think that makes a cleaner line along the left hand side here and along the right hand side. Okay, so we've tidied up the header here. Next, I'm going to go and add a little bit of space in between the header and the actual visual information itself. So let's go back to the divider and then let's go to this option underneath here, which is spacing. And we're going to turn on the custom spacing and we can see we've got three options spacing below the title so let's make that slightly bigger in fact that's another one let's leave it it is i think that's fine at five spacing below the subtitle okay so it's the spacing between the subtitle and the divider link so let's make that slightly bigger and then we need to increase the spacing between the title and the actual visual itself so let's go and increase that We'll keep that at 10 as well. Okay, so we've got a clear title here, which is phrased as a question, which are visual answers. And then we've got the description and then we're into the visual itself. So let's start looking at how we can improve the layout of the matrix. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm not too happy with is the fact that these are all in uppercase. I think this makes it harder to read. So the first option here would be to convert this to sentence case, which is a capital letter at the start of each category in the source data. The next option would be to do it in Power Query as you import the data, but if that's not available to you, you can still do it within Power BI by creating a couple of new calculated columns. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so here's how we do it. We first of all create a variable which is going to put the whole of the department in lowercase. We're going to use this lower function here to convert it into lowercase. Then what we're going to do is we're going to extract the first letter from this variable here, which is lower text, and then we're going to convert that to uppercase. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go and concatenate the first capital letter here and the remaining letters from the category, which will all be lowercase using this formula. Here. So the first thing it does is it calculates the length of the category text, then it reduces that by one. And then we concatenate the first letter, which was capital, and use this write function with this length minus one to go and extract all of the characters to the right except the very first one. And the net result is you've got the capital letter at the start and then the others in lowercase. And that's exactly what we need. And we'll do the same for the discipline. So let's go and replace these in here. Okay, so now we can see that this reads a lot better with these sentence cases, which is just a capitalized first letter of the category value. Okay, so we're not gonna switch on grid links here or guide links in the matrix, because I think that just confuses the issue, particularly when you've got a heat map like we've got here. But we are gonna look at these ones here. Okay, so we're gonna to go to grid, and then we're gonna go under the border section here. Now, I'm not gonna change any of the, the border positions for any of the, the, the lines, because I think these are fine. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go and change this color here, and we'll change it to be a match to the divider line color here. Okay, so it's a little bit of consistency between the colors that are on the actual visual and this guideline here. And the other thing we'll do is we'll move that out and we're gonna go and play with that in a second, but they, they can match as well, just to create a bit of consistency between the alignment here. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is we'll minimize this and then we're gonna to go to this row padding and I'm gonna make it slightly bigger. Okay, I think it's a little bit too tight there and we'll make it three and i'm also going to go and reduce the font size here so let's go and reduce that now the global font size has impacted these here and these here because well, i probably never changed those when i was setting it up but i've probably overwritten these ones here so let's go in and we'll change the font size here as well but i think actually 10 is quite a good size so let's go into our first of all column headers and that's 10, and that's fine. And then row headers is 10. And then let's go to values and we can see that's 12. So let's make that 10 as well. Okay, so that's making it a little bit more compact, but we've also tempered that with an extra bit of spacing here that just gives each of the cells a little bit more of a, a room to breathe with a little bit of white space or conditioning formatted space above and below the value, which I quite like. Okay, so next let's look at the, the totals here because I'd actually like them to be less bold and I think a background color is gonna highlight them slightly better and just draw a little bit of a border around these values here. So let's go in and we'll look at those. So when it comes to column totals, we've got column totals and we've got column grand totals. Okay, so the column totals is on. So let's go in here and look at the values and we can see we've got a background option here. So let's put in a light background here. And we can see that that background is entered there. And then we are gonna go for something slightly lighter than that. So let's go into more colors and I'm just gonna make it slightly lighter. Okay, we'll stick with that for just now. And then let's do the same for the rows. Okay, right, perfect. So we're gonna budge that up a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want there to be roughly the same amount of space here for each one of these. So maintenance and engineering are the longest ones. So let's make some of the other ones slightly longer. And this just takes a little bit of trial and error here. There probably is an automated way of doing it, but let's just do it using a little bit of drag and then drop in here. And what I really want is to have each one roughly the same width. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a distribute columns horizontally like you would get if you were in a table within PowerPoint or Excel or whatever. At the moment, I'm sure that will come. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better there. 
Now the only issue we've got is these columns here, so I don't want these to be bold anymore. So I'm actually going to go back into this value here and I'm going to take off the bold. And we can see that nothing has happened. Okay, so I've gone into the VOB subtitles here. I've gone to values and I've gone to bold and I've taken that off. Now this is because the grand total formatting overwrites the subtotal formatting. So we need to go into the VOB grand total. And we also need to take off bold here. And we can see that that's actually happened here on the VO. And then we're just going to go in and do it on the column as well. Okay, now we do need to make sure we take it off of the column subtotal as well. Okay, great. So these are looking a little bit better there. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to left justify all the values. Okay, I just think it, it reads better from left to right if the values are justified to the left hand side of each of the cells. So let's go and we'll do that. So to do that, we're going to go into specific column and we're going to select this bat log hours. Okay, so that's going to be these columns here because we only have one, one measure in this matrix here. And then what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and click on this button here and it says apply to header. So we're going to switch that on. And that's just going to make sure the header values are also left justified. And then we're going to go and do the same for the columns. Okay, now what you'll see is there's not an option under the column values to go and left or right justify the value. So what we do there is we go back to specific columns and we also apply it to the totals. Okay, and we can see they've been left justified. Right, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to make this labeling of the rows and the columns a little bit clearer. Now at the moment, this says discipline sentence case. So basically it's the discipline. Now sometimes it's obvious what the values in the columns and in the rows are, but in this instance here, it can be a little bit confusing as to whether it's a discipline or a department. So let's have a look at this here. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to have a label for the rows and a label for the column. Okay, so what you can do is you can go in here and we can double click on here and we can change this here to change the label here. So what I'm going to do is along the top we've got the department and along the bottom we've got the discipline. So if we first of all put department and then put a slash and then put discipline. Okay, and then we can budge this up a little bit. And now we can see it's a bit clearer. We've got department and discipline, but I think we can go a step further. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to use arrows to point in that direction and an arrow to point in the downward direction to indicate that the department is along the top and the discipline is along the left-hand side. So let's look at how we do that. So I've gone into this website here and there's loads of these websites that allow you to search for these Unicode characters. And I've gone and found this example here of an arrow that's pointing to the left. Now we just did a search for down arrows and we've got lots and lots to choose from, but these are quite thick. And I think these will fit in really well. So we'll just copy that, the left arrow and then we'll just copy the down arrow. So let's do the first one, copy to clipboard. Okay, and I'm going to paste that at the end there for discipline. And then let's get the left facing arrow. It is here. And let's paste that into there and see how it looks. So now we can see there's a little bit of a, a neat little visual indicator here that looks at department and points along the, the columns there and then discipline and points down the rows. So that just helps the reader to really quickly understand what label refers to the columns and rows. Okay, so just finally, I'm going to add a border here because I just think it does need a little bit of a border there. So let's go back in here. Go up to visual border. And we're just going to change that to a very, very light colour there. One of these ones here will do. And that just adds in a little bit of a, a border around the matrix. Okay, so hopefully you've got some ideas about how you could breathe some life into some of your old matrix visuals with some of the new features that's been released in Power BI in the last year. And if you found this video useful, it's always appreciated if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos that I release, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I release a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.